Katarina? I thought I'd recognize Katarina's name, but it was in, in a way connected to Uppsala University, but that might not be true. I might remember wrong. Hello, yeah. Benedict. I'm not sure what S E R E S E R I, or should I know? Project competence, EU. Oh no, Ebba. One of Ebba. David's friends, I uh, colleagues, I suspect. Okay, and Ebba has arrived, so now we start. I think it's 14, uh, 14 hours then, David. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe two minutes more, I don't know. Or yeah, one minute. Okay. All you arrived lately, please fill in the poll. That, what's your experience with webinars? And okay. I really like them, our map with all the pins. But we are missing a pin from Africa. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> uh, from the yeah. Americas, US yeah. and South America. Also America. Not yet. Australia. Thanks, Benedict and Inge, for your information about Siri. Okay, but I think now it's time to start. Mm -hmm. I will start the recording of our meeting. And yeah, hello to everybody. I'm I'm very glad that this event can can happen because of the support of my fellow colleagues. Uh, yeah, Alistair, if you know he's not in, in picture. <laughs> Marcus sure, and Torhild. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, my name is David, and it's more or less my fault that this webinar is happening <laughs> today. Um, and to have it in, in this format as a participant-driven uh, event. Yeah, but I would like to um, have an introduction of, of the organizing team. So, Markus Alistair, say some words about you, and, and after the Torhead, who will be the co-moderator. Alistair. Oh, hello. My name is Alistair Kruelman. I work at Linnaeus University in the southeast of Sweden. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of these webinars. Uh, in this one, I intend to take a bit of a back seat, but uh, I've been involved in the planning of it, and uh, it will be interesting to see how this one works out. But I will, uh, I'll turn my video off and let you focus on the people who are really going to do the speaking this time. But uh, happy to be along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Marcos? Yeah, and uh, almost the same things apply to me then. I've been engaged in the preparation of the webinar and I'll be in the chat predominantly and looking for questions there and be the participants' voice into the panel discussions and whilst the uh, presenters have their presentations. So I'll be in the background, otherwise I work at Karlstad University and for the Swedish NREM, the National Resource and Educational Network, as a product and community manager for web conferencing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Torhild? I am uh, Torhild Slotto. I work with uh, Flexible Education Norway, which is a member association for um, schools and universities uh, and uh, their uh, online teaching. Um, we have tried webinars in many different uh, connections and this webinar today is um, something a bit new and very interesting. Um, so I'm happy to be here, David. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for co-moderating co today's session. Yeah, the idea of a webinar was to, to, to have it a, a really participatory approach. So we had an open call. Uh, and people could uh, propose uh, short sessions, and uh, yeah, we've decided to to take the, the three sessions with the most votes, and and that was Ronald, and it was me. I proposed the session as well, and it is Christian, <laughs> and <laughs> each of us <laughs> will have uh, ten minutes for presentation and discussion. 
Um, and after that, we will have a discussion on, on the format itself, uh, because we believe that a participatory approach is is a kind kind of a method that, that could really be of value for, for webinars. Yeah, I don't know. Have I forgotten anything, Torhild? I think that's fine. We will uh, have yeah. discussion in the end, yeah. and also discussion on the format of this webinar. So mm -hmm. please keep it in mind. Okay, and so we should start, I think, with Ronald. And yeah, please introduce yourself. The floor is yours, and the presentation should be here in a second. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity to talk so in front of so many people. Uh, thank you, David and friends. Uh, I, I'm really excited about so many people and in so so many people in so many places. Uh, that's some sort. It's also new for me. Usually, I'm in the German-speaking countries with my webinars, but really, I'm excited. I hope you hear me well. David, is everything okay with the sound? David, oh, perfect. <laughs> So I want to give you a really very short presentation, six minutes presentation about uh, didactics with beneficial output. And um, I'm a webinar trainer. This means I help corporations and also uh, small business people to improve their webinars. And I'm really excited about this technology. I love this technology. Uh, and I really, as you see, I try a lot of things, and um, I have a special background, for example, and, and um, yeah. So five keys, and I want to say that if you really, if you use these five keys, you will have better webinars than maybe 90% of uh, other webinar uh, teachers at least of those webinars I've seen. So right now, many people jump in into this webinar um, technology, and there are some many, very often very simple mistakes, in, especially in the question of didactics. So I will give you a short, a short presentation about this. So what you see here, uh, or what I want to say is, I love, uh, I love uh, handies, or mobile phones, I love smart smartphones. I have one on my desk and I'm really excited about this. And what you see here, uh, this was my very first um, mobile phone, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> uh, my very first mobile phone. And I played with this with my friends in the forests. And what is very important about this so-called tin can phone is that you just you cannot just talk also can listen. And this is also very important in the question of how you set up your webinars. So even very long time before you are in the webinar, you should listen to your, your audience, you should listen to your participants in a way that you do some sort of research. You should know who is your audience, you should know what are the needs, what are the problems, why do they join the webinars. How is their webinar experience? What can, how much interaction can I do with them without overwhelming them? And many things. All about how can you improve the lives of your participants? So this is the the main thought at the beginning for me when I set up a webinar: the participant orientation. And all these questions or the answers to these questions should be. Uh, Worked out into your into your webinar structure, into your webinar uh, work. So, in the next next slide is about interaction, and uh, David and I thought, should we do it interactively or not? This slide, and I would ask you just to try it. I will give you one minute. I would ask you to uh, use the draw button, which is some sort of here, and then um, draw the lines between between the, the spots. Uh, after using the draw button, you can there's an option to use a button called ah, it's, it's a button 
called pencil, and with the pencil you can draw the lines between these. And while you're drawing, you have to use the pencil tool. Do you see this? First click the draw button, and secondly use the pencil tool which is uh, over there. Yes, and <laughs> I forgot to say, don't, should not everyone start with one, please start somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Because we have already <laughs> you that. And if everyone if anybody knows what is it about this pic this this picture, then uh, write it or yes, write it into the chat. Well, there is no chat and I think the interaction possibility is limited here as well because there are only participants, so they wouldn't have their rights. So the only no, people who could no, <laughs> now they have the rights. Now they have the rights to draw. Okay. All right. I've, given, I've given them all the rights. <laughs> so Ah, okay. Very interesting. So <laughs> structures. So it's not I think we won't work it out. Usually, uh, when I do this, it works out because we have a smaller group of people, uh, the, the image is larger, and in this case, uh, this is a, a wonder lamp. What I want to show you, what, what I wanted to show you with this interaction is what, what is possible, what we can do, and uh, we can even, we can have a lot of interaction. David is an expert in interactive things, I think, and many others of the, in the panel. Um, so. In my webinars, I usually also have things like this, which do not belong to the topic, just to uh, have a brain-friendly uh, interaction, a brain-friendly pause, so that people can switch off and then focus again after a minute to the, to the topic. So according to interaction, there is something else which is might, might be very important for you when you're holding webinars, when you're presenting webinars. This is the question of um, how much interaction can you cope, especially when you have no moderator. So most of you, maybe when they start, when you start with webinars, maybe you have no moderator and you're alone in the webinar room as presenter. So this means you have to consider how much interaction, how much interaction does not overwhelm you. And this is a short uh, infographics which says when I have full interaction with where the participants can also join with video, audio, an open chat, this and that. So the number is quite small. Maybe uh, it's two or four or six people also according to the uh, how experienced the people are. But then the next step is uh, the reduced uh, interaction when you turn off audio and video of the participants and then minimal interaction and no interaction, but I think no interaction doesn't make much sense in the webinar. So the latest here, you should ask yourself if you reach this, um, this threshold of, part of the participant number, you should ask yourself, uh, is the webinar, does the webinar make sense? Second question, shouldn't I organize a moderator? So interaction can also be overwhelming. Don't forget this. Um, yeah. So the next thing about the structure, I, I really love one rule, uh, a structural rule in many different um, situations and, and uh, perspectives. It's the three to five rule. So as you see, this woman also has three to five um, elements on um, on, on one level, and this is uh, how I set up also webinars. So when I structure webinars, I try to have three to five main aspects, and of course, they can have still again uh, three to five uh, sub aspects. But to have a good structure, a brain friendly structure, really helps the people, really helps uh, your participants to to feel well in the structure. So. Usually, it's very important that the, the participants know where they are at. And the less stress the people have and the more uh, well they feel, the better they will learn whatever you want to tell them. So this is my the so-called structure rules rule. And um, now we come to the design question. 
which is, I hope you are ready for some provocative uh, aspect here. Uh, it's about bullets. So you see here bullets, bullets kill, hmm? very provocative, and bullets kill attention. So what I really want to, oh, where is the, the third point? It's missing. No. The attention point is missing. I'm, it's that strange. However, so what I wanted to say is bullets kill attention. So very, 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 very often I see webinar trainers or trainers still using bullets explaining something and um, and this might be okay for uh, some some slides but don't use it permanently and uh, what I've learned is there is some sort of split attention effect so in the worst case the webinar trainers read what they see in the bullets and what happens then is that the participants compare what they hear and what they see. And this is the, it's called split attention effects. And then they co compare between what they hear and what they see. And this, um, yeah, this brings the focus to the wrong thing. They should focus on the content and not on the comparison. So what I really um, want to, to bring further is what I want to say, tell is uh, use, you can start with bullet points, but then in, in your, not, uh, in your, when you set up your webinar, when you're structuring your webinar, you can start with bullet points, but then try to uh, change the bullet points to images, stories, diagrams, quotes, or even short videos. So go <laughs> leave this bullet point uh, thing because um, yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not really helpful. So this is the split attention effect and. The last thing uh, I want to bring is the, the focus and the clarity. So, um, you, you know, in this webinar, in this uh, presentation now, I asked David to shut down the, the public um, chat. And I think this is helpful because it's not really good to have a so-called forced multitasking, even especially for people who are not really um, who have not visited or uh, joined many webinars, who are not experienced with webinars, this multitasking thing, the, the, the big window with the many windows in, within can be really distracting. So uh, I think it's better to focus really uh, and then again to open up and then focus maybe on the public uh, chat and then focus again on the presentation. So uh, yeah, we shouldn't lose the focus uh, when it's about learning. Of course, it might be interesting to experience, experiment with many different things, but to have a laboratory way of, thing, of webinar, but when I try, when I want my, my participants to, to learn a lot, I try to focus and to have to, I try to have a clear um, webinar room with not so many uh, windows and yeah, just clarity and focus. So this was it. I didn't check the time. I hope it's still, I'm still within the time frame. And I want to thank you for your attention. Here you see Webby. Uh, this is my, my companion, my assistant, Webby. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much. You see all my contact data here. And yeah, if you need any further assistance, if you want to improve your webinars, you can contact me. And if you want to um, also see which resources I use, also which platform I use, I have a, a, a site with a recommended resources and I will put it afterwards into the chat for you. So thank you very much. And I'm excited about your questions. Also, Webby is excited and waiting for your questions. <laughs> So now we can change the layout. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Ronald. Yeah. Uh, any remarks, additions, questions for 
Ronald. One question was about the chat. Ronald told us what he wanted to present without the chat because of distraction. What, what do you think? This was the chat missing? Controversial, yes. <laughs> I think this would be pretty interesting what you think uh, if you missed the chat a lot or if it's if it was helpful that you was were able to focus better. It would be interesting to see to hear what what you think about this. I think we already got a number of questions here. One is by Inge that answered, asks, how do you find out about the needs of your participants then? That's a good question. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder. For example, for this webinar, I was checking the, the lists and I, you know it was, it was Facebook, so I, I had a, a look at some Facebook uh, profiles and I also know some, I, th I was also watching the video of the first of your first webinar, so I had an I had a feeling with whom I, I will, to whom I will talk. But uh, it depends on the situation how you you do the research. But usually, yeah. And if you have no idea and it's really important, ask the, ask your participants beforehand some questions so that you get a, a feeling of it. Mm -hmm. Then I think there is another question that I had in my mind myself. Then you, you, you use a specific background. Could you say a word or two about your background there, Ronald? <laughs> a special background. I hope it don't hurt your eyes. Um, it's, a, it's called high, uh, high key, a white high key background, and uh, I use this because I, I like really this this setting. It's it's very special, and you know. In this case, somehow it doesn't fit, and I was also considering should I use it, shouldn't I use it, because we have all so different backgrounds, and yeah. But I thought it's interesting for you maybe to see this. Um, I'm also a little experienced with uh, with video uh, blogging, and also use this high key background in my video blogs, and I I really enjoy this way of have to have this clarity and I have the opportunity here. I, I know I need it's a little bit technically special because I have six uh, so-called soft boxes. I don't know if you knew, know this. These are boxes for uh, where you have the video production. And I think if you have these resources and if you like, if you are um, technical interested, it really works well. And I'm I'm glad to have this special background. And, and but another, another special thing I really, uh, which is not that complicated, but I would recommend is, for me it's really helpful to stand. You know, I'm standing right now, and you should try it out. Uh, what is your feeling when you're sitting and when you're standing? And usually it's very different, different energies uh, you have, different way of talking. If I try uh, one more question here then, Ronald, that comes from Benedict and it's about uh, something that he couldn't really understand then. The question was, if there are more participants, should there be more interaction or less? Okay, thank you. <laughs> it was very short. It was very short and so maybe it didn't explain it well. So when you're alone, when you have, don't have a moderator, and most of you will start maybe alone uh, with webinars, you should really consider when you have more participants, you should consider if you should lower the activities, lower the, the interactions. So for example, very easy example, when I'm holding my webinars on the platform Elodip um, and I have more than 20, 25 participants, the chat uh, is not public. I, I set the chat as not public. And when I will have 100 participants or 80 or so, then I will, I will have a, a moderator. So usually the webinar trainers say four, five, six interactions per hour are good, but I want to say might be, might be the case, but also consider uh, what, sh what you're coping, what, what, what can you cope with. And, um, yeah, and this, is, this is very important. It, it, there are factors like the participants number, but your own factors are your uh, capacity, uh, of of uh, your multitasking capacity, I would say, 
your experience with webinars, your experience as trainer in general, general. So these are the factors and these thresholds I mentioned will be different for everyone. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we will take up some. Okay, we will go further to David, David Rettler. He is a university lecturer in Salzburg and Klagenfurt. Uh, he has used webinar in his teaching a lot, and he has some very nice experience to share with us. So, David, the screen is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, so, the idea is to have a combination of a flipped classroom approach uh, and, and webinars. So that's me, university lecturer, adult educator, and consultant for two fields, social media and European projects. And yeah, the ingredients for, for this issue, a virtual classroom, like we have this one right now, and the flipped classroom approach. And a method, uh, this is called learning by teaching. So this is a webinar room and a university class of mine. The inverted classroom means that students are watching videos at home and, and um, not during um, um, the, the input is not given during classroom hours. Classroom hours are used for hands-on um, discussions. That's, that's the interesting point for well, flipped classroom. Learning by teaching means that the students prepare the lessons by themselves. They teach themselves. And, and I think it's nice to, to combine these, these aspects with the following uh, implementation. Um, the students prepare screencasts. Screencasts are, are videos made out of a computer screen and, and you talk uh, about what, you, what you're showing. Uh, five minutes, very short, so you have to be really uh, concise and, and to the point. The videos uh, are being uploaded to, to YouTube and put on the learning platform with additional information and some assignments for, for the fellow students. Yeah, this is a nice program for for screen, for producing screencasts. It is, it is free and it's working really well and, and simple. And, and after the production of a screencast, the screencast is um, put, put on, on a, a learning platform uh, with some assignments and, and it has to be discussed by, by the students. And after after one week of, of discussion, uh, the issue of the screencast is discussed live in, in Adobe Connect. And, and the session uh, has to be moderated by, by the students themselves. So my, my role as an instructor uh, is really changing. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe even less than, than a moderator. I'm maybe just an enabler. Yeah, the main results produced by the students are the screencast. So I think this is a nice competence as well to, to know how, how this works. So they have to moderate the online discussion asynchronously. And there is the synchronous webinar session as well. So they gain experience on, on how to do this. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, screencast automatic is nice as well. But Screener is my, my favorite uh, tool for that. But there are many around. Any so questions? questions and hmm? remarks are welcome. Learning by teaching? Peer teaching, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of peer to peer approach. Some more uh, comments coming in.
what is the students' uh, feedback on, on this way of doing it, David? They like it. They like it because it's different, mm -hmm. and and they use media for for learning and interacting. And they like to produce a screencast because it's much easier than than writing. Yeah, but but you have to think about how to do it. Um, do you feel that some students are not at all with you? That they are uh, left behind? Mm, not not really, because, because this, this this structure, everybody has to to do it, and and everybody should should help the others, and 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 finally, I'm assisting and and following what 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 what, what they are doing. Um, there is coming a question from Benedict. I think this is also a public audience. If you set up a topic in advance, might might be possible. Be because short videos are easy to to watch, and pe people tend to to watch movies more likely than they are, are going to read te texts. Yeah. So, so how cre how creative are your students, David? Ah, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I encourage I encourage them to to be creative. Have you evaluated the learning outcome of this type of flipped classroom? Yes yes yes. Well, a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> no, as I told you, they 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 like they like the approach. They like to be creative, producing different formats. Uh, and and to 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 even to 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 gain experience with moderating webinars and, and moderating uh, asynchronous uh, sessions as well. Yeah, because usually they they give the answers, but but in this case, uh, it's it's them to to lead the discussion and and to ask provocative questions, for example. But have you have some some other person to evaluate? Oh, I've. We, we've got uh, Caroline here. He, yep. She's an ex-student, and <laughs> yeah, she, she's giving us <laughs> some form of evaluation. She's very grateful for this flexible mod model, which allowed us to participate from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I don't think Peter Arnfeld meant the the kind of sponsored evaluation that we're talking of here now, but uh, more of like learning outcomes that are achieved in in sort of controlled experiments or, or controlled studies. Yeah, no, no, not not really a, a controlled study. Yeah. But it would be interesting if your faculty or institute make some some real good evaluation and compare with the ordinary lecturing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not 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 really. Not <laughs> really. <laughs> would be interesting. Yeah. Um, a last question: How interesting is the webinar after the students have been discussing the screencast for one week online? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the webinar is, is really for hands-on. So, for for example, one uh, one course was about social media tools, and and so before before the webinar, they discussed the social media tools. But during the webinar, the, the social media tools are being explored together. Yeah, sometimes synchronously. So it's a, it's a really hands-on, uh, synchronous way of interaction and uh, trial trial out. Maybe. You have to answer in what subject do you teach, David? Uh, it's, it's communication. Yeah. Usually communication. Uh, there was one final question here by Lars from Lund, uh, if there's an optimal length of this kind of flipped classroom videos. You can think about it and write it during the next. Yeah. 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 OK. Thank you so much, David. It was really very interesting. Uh, we need uh, to discuss this in a full uh, webinar once. This was too short. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will get invitations now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So I think we should continue with Christian. You.
So hi there, I'm Christian Freisleben. I'm sitting here at my desk in, in Linz, which is in Upper Austria, right near the Danube, which is floating, if you just don't know it, from all the way from, uh, from the sea through Austria, and we, you will get to Vienna as well. Uh, my lecture is about improvisation and transmedia storytelling in webinars, which could fill, of course, lots of webinars. And, and I've got seven minutes, so let's start improvising. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm working as a freelancing uh, counsel and teacher, and uh, using lots of applied improvisation in my work, in my seminars, and also in my webinars which I also do with David a lot. So, um, the first point, improvisation is a basal human ability. Everybody of us is able to improvise and is doing it all the way and you can practice it and it's, um, our, it's a strength of every one of us. Um, so, um, improvisation from my point of view and from lots of people's point of view is that we are able to cooperate, to learn together and from each other. Um, ideas come true, real, visible and connectable. So it's like everybody is joining in and we together create uh, wisdom, we together create education, we together create uh, with, um, innovation. Um, and the first things I would point would like to point at is there are some tools in Web 2.0 to 2.0, sorry, um, uh, like Etherpads, like Mozilla Etherpad Hackpad, or the instruments of Google Drive. So you could go there, and I've uh, used this lots of time in some webinars that you can create questions, ideas, concepts, and stories together in a word-by-word, -word, sentence by sentence way, or with ABC games. Or um, I described it here as a resolution three-step game, which is going like this. Um, one of us is saying a first sentence, making up the, the stage for the problem. The second one is bringing in um, the problem. And the third person is saying, without thinking, a solution to the problem. So I use it, uh, uses it a lot in groups, and you can also use it, use it with this um, instrument. Uh, and perhaps you ask yourself, what is, what could be word by word? It's very easy. I say a word, you say a word, another one says a word, and it's emerging a story. And there are emerging ideas, and it's a very powerful tool in learning together, and I think it's very interesting and useful in webinars um, to brainstorm or to create solutions. So that's one point which is a lot used in applied improvisation, and you can also use it in webinars. The other thing is um, you can share your ideas. Of course, you've heard of brainstorming, and you've caught, you heard by sketching. There are lots of tools in the internet which help us in sketching and brainstorming uh, together. So, one basic idea of applied improvisation is the principle of yes and. So, I put an idea, and you don't say no, and what the fuck is that? So, uh, you do say yes, ah, that's a good idea, and I put my idea, my point of view, and my experiences uh, near it, and together something is combining, coming out something completely new. Um, and so um, we are creating together in, in the way of connectivism. So um, here is a, um, I've done uh, four instruments in a flip board. Uh, you can afterwards in the uh, you can look it up afterwards. And this is already my last slide uh, because it's lot got it's it's uh, rather ingenious because it sums up very very great the connection between improvisation uh, and transmedia storytelling. What 
uh, just a word about transmedia storytelling. Um, it means that you tell stories by over a multitude of channels. So there are there's a text, there are pictures, there's sound, um, and a lot of other things we can see here, see here in this very beautiful picture. Uh, like here, it's puppet video, and I've seen some very interesting. Um, uh, videos about a paper theater uh, used in education. So it's a quite um, similar idea to that what David introduced because um, people take videos at home or combine them with other tools and present them to other um, to other participants. One powerful tool here is Mozilla Popcorn, which is uh, very fascinating because if I put together a presentation with video, with sound, with pictures, with text, um, and I do it in my home place in uh, in Linz, for instance, so I can put it in the in the web, and David is uh, putting to it pictures, sounds, and texts from from Salzburg. Or I can send it to Torhild and she ca could combine hers. So transmedia storytelling is also a point of putting ideas together um, and um, stimulate people to go to their daily living and look what is there to be found f uh, about the things they are learning or they should, ha should have to learn. So the very interesting thing is that here learning is combined by our, uh, with our daily living, and it's very near to us. So these are these pictures so show clearly also the the the, the multitude um, uh, approaches to transmedia storytelling. Um, and one last sentence is what what is the connection to applied improvisation? It's again the idea of sharing ideas, putting it together, building one thing about another one, um, supporting each other, learning from each other through the power of yes and. So I look forward to, yes and, to your yes ands and to your questions um, to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, Christian, I picked up one uh, interesting question here uh, in the chat, and that was from Mark, I guess. Uh, if you do this in webinars like this one, would you yeah. use uh, chat only, or would you uh, uh, would um, you allow the others to speak then for this kind of brainstorming activity? Yes, that you yes, yes, of course. Um, I use different uh, methods. I I did it uh, with with sound on. We used also chat, uh, and um, the last time I did it in a webinar for people who are teaching German as a second language and we together used uh, different rooms in Adobe Connect. You can set up rooms in, in Adobe Connect and we used different use rooms uh, to, to do word by word stories. But you could also do it by uh, etherpads and link, put in the, 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 the link into a, a platform like um, Adobe Connect or a Google Hangout. Questions, please. Yeah, I think that there's an uh, there's another question there. Uh, if you don't read them yourselves, by my yes, yes, uh, I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a danger of becoming overly enamored of these tools. And um, what about sound instructional design techniques as opposed to to the G whiz factor? <laughs> <laughs> now I, I see the the, the question uh, from Inge Anna who who is asking me what to topics I've tried out with transmedia storytelling. Um, I, am, I knew some experiences from people who use digital storytelling and combine it um, with healthcare. So I've seen some projects in, 
um, in countries where people have hard times in traveling and such things and um, so they use trans they use storytelling and also I've seen it in students who have to take um, uh, who have to do a, a practicum uh, this, um, who, who have to try out to work somewhere and they talk about what it's about trying out how to be like a nurse or uh, a midwife or something like that and share it with other people and they do interviews and um, film them and show them other people so it's like not uh, the, the boring film on midwife another film about midwives but it's uh, coming from the pupils themselves um, and they, they are not only using uh, sound but also combined uh, pictures and texts and, and so on and it's a very interesting point. You're welcome. Um, yes, um, well, uh, Peter asked um, if, if there are examples when it works less well. Well, <laughs> of course, the question is what, what is the webinar about? Yeah, um, and I, I'm at this, I'm, I'm thinking uh, it's very near to the, the approach of David because it's a tool. You can use it. Uh, you plan the webinar, which is an hour, and you could put in um, um, to warm up a word by word game game at five minutes in the in the beginning. And you can could use instruments of transmitter storytelling if it comes to the exp experiences of the participants. But of course, it has to be uh, prepared. So it's um, a question of good designing and good preparation because there's the myth that improvisation is everything but yeah and putting it out from the air and that's not true because it's uh, full of um, it needs uh, preparation and working together and so on this ground people can um, tell the stories put them together and improvise new ideas together So, okay, David, are we going on to um, some final discussion? Yeah. Um, yes. First of all, yes, yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot to the three presenters. It's uh, amazing that how uh, you have um, had the different uh, ideas, the different presentations, which fit so well together. Um, so, thank you so much. Uh, for these excellent presentations and uh, all good ideas uh, which you have given us. Uh, we have now 10 minutes left. Uh, we thought to have a um, few minutes to discuss some more of the points which you have um, uh, presented and also a few minutes in the end to discuss the format of this, uh, of this webinar. Uh, so we will see. Um, we have started with the five keys um, and then uh, by Ronald, uh, very good uh, and uh, good advices and clear points. We went on to David's flipped classroom and his um, creative uh, way of um, lecturing, which was not lecturing, but uh, he said he was he is now less a moderator and uh, more an enabler. That's, of course, very interesting. Um, and the third one with Christian, who says that uh, improvisation is a basal human activity. And uh, you have shown us the brainstorming principle of not um, killing the ideas, uh, but uh, saying yes and the connectivism and how to learn by that way. Um, is there any, um, some more points which we should um, take with us? A uh, last question to the presenters. Um, Marcus, have you followed um, the chat right now? Is there any more questions? 
Yeah, there are very many questions and ideas I get, <laughs> and uh, I try. We, I think we brought up some of the, um, the questions to the presenters directly, but you probably could combine these uh, with Christian's um, uh, input here on, on the brainstorming thing. Then is, uh, have you tried it? And Christian, I think I I, uh, I interpreted Peter's questions in a bit. Are there specific scenarios when uh, the brain, uh, brainstorming in Connect or in Google Hangout? Would be more suitable than in others. You, you tell us that it's it's always uh, the question of the uh, of the objective of the webinar and of the context and of the preparations. But are, are there some general situations where you would recommend this? And uh, it's not so that we could do it and try it right now, could we? Sure, we could try it. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much preparation does it need, and uh, what time would it take to do a short uh, brainstorming session on any topic? Now, right, not prepared at all. Uh, that, that's the, po the that's the best possibility to uh, to use uh, the power of here. So we can put up a chat and brainstorm each uh, together. That's uh, so, and there are also brainstorming tools on Adobe Connect. We, we could use together. So um, I think it's about the question um, in a webinar. Yes, the the main point is you can you can just talk 50 minutes and then say goodbye. So it has to be uh, it has to be interaction because I I just I don't think that the future is like filming a famous professor and putting him onto Adobe Connect that Sandler says. So people have to, to come to join in and to discuss this question. So what we could brainstorm here, how could we use uh, brainstorming in webinars? Yeah? Um, and we could find ideas in uh, within three five minutes. We have here sixty people, over sixty people, and over sixty fantastic ideas and fantastic combining ideas. So what you say now is that we direct us directly to the participants here in the chat and ask them for what is the question then? How should we? How can we do brainstorming? Yeah, sure. All right then. Please, the floor is yours. <laughs> so, dear participants, so uh, please put in some ideas. How could we use brainstorming or the other ideas of applied improvisation in webinars? P please put in your ideas. Hmm. And there is no wrong idea. And we shut up here. <laughs> Mind maps from Iceland. Webinar brainstorm blog. Picture. Good start. You have to hurry up. We have just a couple of minutes more and then we have to go on to the final uh, discussion on the format no of the webinar. No pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> Video clip dealing. Podcast. Yes. That's true, Katarina. Padlet. Yeah, that's a very, very impressive tool. It Are is. you evaluating now, Christian? I think yes, we should. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's, it's fantastic. You see the power. You see the power of of brainstorming and putting ah. ideas together. Um, I think uh, it's we're a bit slow um, because so many people are um, typing to add to together. I would suggest to to put all these ideas on face on the Facebook group. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, or in an etherpad linked to the Facebook group, and to to keep on uh, brainstorming together. Yeah? yeah, because here the the um, uh, uh, nah, uh, it's not so fast here. Yeah, as it could be. Um, so let's yes. let's move on. We have the chance to learn from each other and to build uh, on each other's ideas. Yes, let's uh, let's uh, continue in the Facebook group. Um, and yeah, yeah. I, and I think 
Come on, Marcus. Yeah, I, I would like to pose this question then, because um, there is some minutes now to discuss this kind of format and yep. the, uh, the pre and post uh, context of the format as well. And there is one question that I would like to pose to, to everybody here is, uh, there had been in all four people who voted for proposals on on the original side where we should make proposals for what we would like to know more about. So I would question if, if this thing really works. It tries you, you can see how well it worked today. We got to three different very wonderful presentations. <laughs> and, and people are people are just crazy about contributing here. But when <laughs> it's on the asynchronous side like the Tricider page, there was only four people there voting. So is that yeah. does that mean we, we have to have it in a synchronous environment in order that people feel something is happening right now, I'm part of it. And is the asynchronous, the Facebook and the Tricider and all this kind of stuff, is that just for for people who are doing classes that have to get some marks or something? It's not for the other people who are always... In but the isn't, it, isn't it more like this, uh, sometimes we need a synchronous and other times we need an asynchronous? That's true. Because we have good uh, activities going on in the Facebook groups, different groups, um, which you can do in the nights and so on. <laughs> but of course this is kind of uh, very active and very uh, dynamic where we uh, have the chance to to do it synchronous. Yep. Any more? Um, what about you, Ronald? Have you anything to say about the uh, format of the conference? Um, no, I enjoyed it a lot and I think also the, 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 the preparation was well done. Uh, I was also wondering why just a few people voted, but yeah, I think uh, the, the synchronous way has a lot of power and the synchronous way didn't have that much power, but still we found a solution and still there was an, uh, yeah, we, we, had, we had a nice webinar, <laughs> so it worked somehow, but I was wondering as well, like Marcus, why just a few people joined the, 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 uh, the, the question, uh, which which content should be produced. What about you, Christian? Have you some final words about the conference format? What is my final words? Wow. Who? <laughs> <laughs> That's challenging. Very much. Thank you very much for this great challenge, Toril. Well, uh, I would like to emphasize the point in um, the point about this form of teaching, about this learning, is working together. Yeah? So we share and create wisdom together. Yeah? We can put something together and it's away from these old days where people filled in the knowledge in my head and tried to put it and press it into there, but it's uh, like a new way of learning and um, helping each other. So this could also, or it can change this, the world going on, um, going to a more collaborate and common way. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So what about you, Alistair? Have you some final words before we close? Ah, yes. I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm busy. I'm busy looking at the chat really mostly. Uh, there's the, the there's been questions here about sort of where to continue. I mean, everyone has their favorite sort of asynchronous zones. I mean, some people are not so happy with Facebook. Some people prefer LinkedIn, whereas others are the other way around. Um, there are so many tools. You have to select the tools that seem to appeal to the majority. It's difficult to have a, a, a discussion going in several arenas at the same time. But... Mm. Um, I think you can. I mean, I, I, I suggest, uh, I think you can quite happily have asynchronous uh, webinars. One advantage is that if you have a tool like VoiceThread, where each pair, each, all these people who are in the chat now and contributing so well, I think maybe it's very frustrating when you can't turn your video on, you can't turn your microphone on, and you would like to say something, but you've only got the chat. Mm. In a tool like that, maybe you know, directly afterwards, you could uh, upload a little quick film of two minutes where you put your your voice, and it's up there, and everyone can see you, and suddenly you are you appear, and everyone sees who you are, and you suddenly become a a a, a part of the debate. 
and to create video walls during the week, as, as David was suggesting there, where people could upload their own films. That could also make the um, Facebook group more interesting, is to uh, invite people to make little short films with, like, screener. Record yourself, just straight on like this. Say what you think and stick it onto Facebook or wherever we decide. And let's, let's get a debate going, but let's see what you look like. Let's, let's hear from you. That would be great. Speaker's Corner online. Exactly. Okay, um, David, I leave it to you to uh, close the webinar, please. Yeah, much to add. Thank you very much, everybody, for, for your participation. I, I liked it very much and looking forward to future collaborations in which form they might be. <laughs> I don't know yet, but yeah, have a nice day. Goodbye. And join the Facebook group, please. We can keep the can we keep the chat going for a few minutes just yeah. for people to yeah, talk true. and uh, change you know so that you can exchange yeah. ideas, mail addresses, whatever. Yeah, or and just say goodbye. Yeah, and there are very good uh, comments and suggestions for how we could keep this going on. There's some interesting thing about uh, storifying the future of <laughs> webinar thinking here. I think it was quite good. Um, suggestion done. So please keep on. We'll be around here for a while. Thanks, everybody. Okay, you can turn off the recording now. And we'll put the link to the recording up all over the place. Yes. Very good.